Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. This video will not be about art. This video is about my experience thus far uh, experimenting with an animal-based way of eating. Um, I said I would do this months and months ago. Um, and I was trying to kind of like organize what I wanted to talk about. And I'm planning on like complementing this with a blog entry that's hopefully much more organized that this video than this video is gonna be, but I am planning on having it like um, uh, timestamp so you can skip around and if you're done with my ramble about something, you can like, spick, uh, skip to the next thing. Um, but yeah, I, I am gonna look at my notes. I made like an outline thing that's gonna be for the blog entry that I'm planning on, on doing, which again, it's gonna be long as fuck. It's like a whole ass essay because I have a lot of thoughts on the subject. Um, but I'm planning on winging it here because uh, on this one, I mean, I am gonna look at the notes, some of the notes that I've made for the blog entry to kind of guide my way a little bit so that I don't go into branches too much. Um, but, I just want to talk about, I just want to talk about how it's been for me so far. Uh, all right, so let's see, where can I start? Let me look at the, because uh, I have a rough draft for chapters, like video chapters. Um, so let's see, when did I start? I started in mid-November of last year, I think. And all right, I have kept doing it until now. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about terms real quick before going ahead. Uh, so, okay, the reason for which I started experimenting is because I have seborrheic dermatitis. So what is seborrheic dermatitis? It's a skin condition and I was, di I was diagnosed with it, with it when I was uh, in my early 20s, I think. So it's been like about two decades uh, with this condition. I, before that, I just had quote unquote regular dandruff. Um, Seborrheic dermatitis consists of flare-ups where you get like red patches, you know, like not red, I mean like pink patches of like irritated skin. It's just like inflamed. Uh, sometimes it looks like little crescents, uh, circles or just like whatever, I don't know. Sometimes I feel it and um, I've seen pictures and kind of looks like that. Um, it's itchy, there's flakes involved uh, it's very itchy and very persistently itchy. And so when one has a flare up, it's just itchy <laughs> and flaky. And the flakes can be, sometimes they're kind of dry and white-ish and some other times they're kind of more greasy and maybe like gray, yellowish, I don't know. I don't have pictures of this and I'm not ever gonna post pictures of this because I don't want anyone to see that. I don't really understand when people put pictures of just of them looking super fucked up. Um, I mean, it's helpful for sure, obviously, but I don't wanna do that um, because I don't like seeing that on myself and I don't want other people to see it. Um, but yeah, seborrheic dermatitis, the cause is unknown. It's kind of considered like a fucked up form of dandruff. Dandruff is considered a form of seborrheic dermatitis, but it's like benign, in quotes. Um, and I mean, I guess seborrheic dermatitis kind of is benign as well, because it's like you're not going to die from it or anything, but it's just fucking aggravating. Um, yeah, the cause is unknown, has no cure. It only has treatments. Uh, you know, like creams, shampoos, and uh, sometimes medicines that you take or whatever. Uh, all right, so that's enough of that. Um, it sucks. 
Uh, okay, so then the terms for eating this way, which what I've heard is animal-based, zero-carb, and carnivore. They're all variations of kind of the same thing, uh, sort of. Zero-carbohydrate basically is just like all animal and animal-derived foods. So all meat, so beef, pork, chicken, fish. So when I say all meat, fish is included. Uh, fats derived from animals, dairy, eggs, um, am I missing anything? I think that's it. And zero carb is kind of an inaccurate term, especially if you're eating eggs and dairy because uh, eggs and dairy have like small amounts of carbohydrate. Um, it's not really very, very much at all. And it's, you know, if you're doing like ketogenic diet, it's like, it's an in insignificant amount. You're, it's kind of like a jacked up ketogenic diet uh, carnivore what was animal based oh animal based I think is a Paul dr. Paul Saladino term and in his case it includes like all the things I just said from zero carb and he includes some fruits and honey which is all plant derived so I don't know whatever the thing is that that's what it's called Carnivore, I think, does not include dairy. Um, I think it includes eggs. And then, you know, all meat and eggs, I think. And then there's uh, Michaela Peterson's term, which is lion diet. In her, and, and that means ruminant meat only. So uh, that's beef lamb, bison, I don't know all the herbivores, but all the ruminants, but it's that kind of stuff, deer, um, that stuff, salt and water. Uh, that's what you ingest when you have, when you do lion diet. And what I, the term that I like is animal based. Um, because the way that I've been eating kind of, I mean, it's, it's changed. In the first month, I was having, like the first 30 days, I was having dairy, I was having cheese, I was having eggs, and then I kind of transitioned, then I stopped having pork and chicken, and then stopped having eggs and cheese, and then I've, I was having only beef, beef fat, salt, and water for I don't know how many months. Um, and then recently I'm trying to reintroduce things to see what happens. Just for kicks. For other reasons, because I'm getting frustrated. Um, okay. Mm, finally, a little bit about the term diet. Diet means two things. It can be just the way a person eats, you know, daily, your, your diet. Or it can be, I'm on a diet, meaning that a person is doing something temporarily to lose weight or for something else. But usually the term is used for weight loss. And um, I do not like using the term, even, even when I refer to just like my regular diet. I deliberately avoid the term. Uh, if you go to like the zero carb uh, subreddit, for example, if you read, um, what was his name? The, I just remember his stupid nickname. It's a dumb nickname. It's the bear. Um, he refers to it as a way of eating. And so like people there refer to it as a way of eating deliberately to, to deliberately avoid the term diet because you're not on a diet because it isn't temporary. It's a permanent change or a long-term change. So you're not on a diet, it's just your diet. Um, but I just don't care for the associations, the generalized associations with the term because usually the, the first association that uh, a person will think of is like, oh, I'm on a diet, like it's a game or something. Not into that. Uh, so yeah, I don't use the term for that reason, okay? so. Why did I want to try animal-based eating? Because of the cerebral dermatitis. Like, that's why I started. 
Um, the worst it's been so far was just before starting it, which was, so like, my whole life it's been my, just my scalp, uh, meaning beneath my hair, so not obviously visible other than maybe flakes here and there, uh, which I can just like pick out and whatever, or comb out or like put into a bun, you can't really see them. Um, but then, sometime before starting in November, mid-November last year, the condition had spread to my eyebrows. They also got itchy and flaky and red. And it also spread to like the middle, like the this part of my face here in between my eyebrows where I, you know, where you frown to, and to the sides of my nose. And I found that and continue to find it absolutely mortifying. I don't like that. Um, so now it's like just visible to whomever gazes upon my face. Um, and I don't like that at all. Um, so even though up to that point I was already just like experimenting with other things precisely to try, you know, just for my generalized health and to try to resolve this issue, <clears throat> then I was just like, I have to be way more aggressive than whatever else I was doing. Um, and so that's kind of why I decided to jump in. Um, before that, I hesitated because, you know, you, obviously there's no eating of sugar while you're eating animal-based, which to me just seemed impossible before. Uh, before it was very difficult, like I would have to get mentally ready for like a day or two to be like, all right, the day after tomorrow, just you're not gonna have any sugar. This is like the internal dialogue. You're not gonna have any sugar, it's gonna be okay. It'll be there the day after, you can have it then. Something like that, you know, but the cravings are just te were just terrible. Um, and I just, you know, I just thought that kind of stuff was just like par for the course. Daily life, it's normal. Um, and uh, my cravings for something sweet were pretty bad. And I did try lots of other things. So go all over quickly what kind of other stuff I did before uh, trying animal-based. Okay, I tried uh, no grains, and that includes way more things that you would think. Because apparently it's just like all seeds, so that is like rice, beans, so like even stuff that's gluten-free, quote-unquote. Uh, pasta, bread, like the ones that have gluten as well. Um, I tried no coffee. That I tried that one because I was diagnosed with uh, what's it called? I think it's called fibrocystic breasts, but I don't really know about that diagnosis because the doctor never fucking touched me, so I don't know. But anyway, that's why I tried it because I read something about the relationship between that. Um, I tried no dairy for I think a month. And, uh, what else? I think the, what I tried directly before starting Animal Based was just meat and only fruit for all sugar cravings. And I actually liked that a lot. Um, I quite enjoyed just all of these fruits. They're so juicy and fresh and delicious. Um, I like that there's no plastic packaging, that kind of stuff. It feels very um, earth-like, I don't know. You know, you're eating this thing that is just like right out of the tree or bush or whatever, and that's pretty cool. Uh, but the dermatitis was still there, and so were the cravings. But I liked it. Um, I have a hypothesis, or at least I like the idea that doing that, and I did that for a month, the fruit and meat, that it, that helped me transition into animal-based, uh, but I don't know that for sure. I just like the idea of it. Um, okay. Okay. 
so I'm looking at my notes that I tippy typed um, how long has it been I started on November of last year December January February March April May June July so I'm, I'm at about eight months at this point um, so when I first started I just wanted to get to 30 days just just to see what hap what would happen and um, Um, what did happen? Well, I was eating all, um, all meat, again, all meat, eggs, dairy, and, uh, that was it. I was eating a lot of bacon, a lot of cheese, a lot of, uh, ground beef. I was, I, at that time I was having a lot of ground beef, just like with my breakfast, I would have it with eggs. Uh, but yeah, all meat. And, uh... That was surprisingly easy. Um, I still had sugar cravings, but it was strangely easy to just... They, they became much more quiet and manageable. They were not as crazy as they were before, because I'll give you an example that happened more than once. Um, it, it's like the middle of winter in the middle of a snowstorm and I would put on just all the required layers of clothes, boots, socks, pants, winter coat, whatever, keys, wallet, and everything just to go to 7-Eleven just to get like Junior Mints or I think what 7-Eleven sells is uh, York Peppermint Patties just to get York Peppermint Patties because I just fucking needed some. Um, and, you know, maybe that's like funny and stuff, but I don't think it's funny, especially now that I don't have that problem, which is insane. Um, you know, there's something about, there's something psychological, weird and psychological about the enjoyment of food that I think gets confused with the addiction to food. Um, and I wouldn't know the difference if it wasn't because I have experience and am experiencing it. It's like I remember now just how I couldn't think about anything else except I really want something sweet right now. And I would, it would occupy space in my mind, you know, it, could, it would occupy the thoughts that I'd be having. It would take space up in the internal dialogue. It would take time because I was thinking about it for minutes and minutes until I actually went to get something. I would have to stop doing whatever I was doing to go get something. And it's like now I barely think about food. And that's just crazy to me. Um... But, right, so at first it was just about getting to 30 days, and again, in the, those first 30 days I still had a little bit of sugar cravings, but they were definitely not the same. So the way, you know, I found it surprisingly easy to deal with them by just having more bacon and cheese. Um, one day I tried a little bit of heavy cream that we had, and then I had just the entire carton of heavy cream. Because it had like a little leftover sweet taste. Um, so I ended up finding something called heavy cream powder and butter powder, powdered butter. Uh, because these things have like a trace taste of sweetness. So that was pretty helpful to mitigate the, the cravings in these first 30 days. And not to mention it's delicious and fatty and delicious. Uh, but um, because they kept getting more manageable, and um, also I have read that 
if you know you're just replacing the sweet craving with another sweet craving even if it's less sweet and even if it has way less sugar so because they were more manageable and because I'm not trying to replace the addiction with something else um, I decided to just like stop having them like um, a month and a half in I just stopped having them besides those powder things are expensive um, so yes I um right so a month and a half in I still had the rough this rough skin and itchy eyebrows itchy flaky eyebrows and I was still eating chicken and pork and I also started getting like teary eyes watery eyes I mean I still have those but that's another thing I don't know about, I don't know what it is but the thing is that they're still there um, the thing is that my nose also started getting runny and so I looked stuff up in the zero carb subreddit and somebody said something about pork and chicken so I stopped having the pork and chicken this was about a month and a half in and those two things were resolved in about just like a few days and I was able to corroborate the thing about the chicken by having chicken like two weeks after that and then my, the skin was it I don't remember where but it got rough again and then it kind of like faded out um, so I haven't had pork and chicken since then and I kind of I can't say that I miss them especially the chicken chicken skins maybe if you like fry them and make them into like chips that's good but the muscle itself not I can't I'm not sure if I really miss it or not um, that time that I tried it I didn't care for how like crumbly and shitty it felt in my mouth um, so yeah, I just after, in like the next two weeks or something, I stopped having just cheese, eggs, because I'm obviously a pussy around it, right? I'm like dilly dally and just like stop. Um, and then maybe like two months in, I just started having just beef salt and water. Um, and I started getting beef trimmings at the grocery store making tallow, making beef cracklins, fucking delicious. And trying different kinds of salt. Table salt was terrible. It gave me the shits. And it, it was making me crash because it has dextrose, it's sugar, and it has whatever else that doesn't need to be there. Um, but that was relatively recent. Lots of things have happened. Um, I still have the issue with my eyes. But I also have dry eyes because I had a LASIK operation and I took Roaccutane. I, I don't know how long I took it for, but I took it for a long time. And one of the just indefinite side effects of that fucking medicine is dry eyes. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if the acne treatment was even fucking worth it, but whatever. Um, yes, so... Anyway, I still have the seborrheic dermatitis, but I have been experiencing very interesting things. So let's talk about the results so far. Some results so far. Because even though the seborrheic dermatitis is still there, um, I've still been experiencing benefits that started to show up relatively early on. I would say, I don't know, two weeks in. Um, I started being able to focus better on one activity and finishing it. Um, I started being less anxious. Uh, I started sleeping a little bit better. Um, my wake sleep cycle thing has become like super consistent it's where like I will wake up and be ready to get up immediately which I didn't even know I had a problem with that, but I did. And then I start getting tired at around the same time, between 9 and 9.30. And then when I go to bed, I fall asleep in like 20 minutes, less maybe. Um, which is just amazing. Um, right, so I... Right, so I didn't know that I had a problem getting out of bed, but it was extremely difficult to get out of bed, especially if I didn't have any appointments or anything. 
I, it was extremely difficult for me to get out of bed. I just wanted to stay in bed. I couldn't open my eyes. I was groggy. I was whatever. Um, very anxious, very um, overwhelming feeling of I want to do all of this stuff and I don't know how to do it. Um, just constant thought thoughts about food. It's like I have lots of experience with mixed, you know, quote unquote mixed eating, uh, you know, decades of it. And I was always getting very uncomfortably full. And then I would be uncomfortable, uncomfortably full for just hours afterwards. And then I would get like acid reflux or something. And I would have like, you know, the food baby because it's so funny. <laughs> um, just thinking and then thinking about food all the time. Even when I didn't get uncomfortably full, I would still, I, I would like try to eat a normal amount of food. But then I'd be hungry like two hours later. Even with all the fiber and all the whatever that we're told, you know, that one is told is supposed to be good for you. Um, and there's none of that now. <laughs> there's no uncomfortable fullness. There's no looping thoughts. There's no invasive thoughts about food. There's no despair around food. Um, I think about food when I get hungry. I make the food. I eat the food. I enjoy the hell out of it. And then I'm done thinking about it. It is so easy to stop eating. Before, it was very difficult to stop eating because I kept wanting to pick at things. Oh, I want something sweet. It's like, oh, I'll have a French fry and, you know, oh, let's have a dessert. I have room for dessert. Um, this type of stuff. Which really makes no sense, especially if you had a ton of food already. It's like I always think of having had a hamburger with fries and a milkshake and then be like, I kind of want a brownie dessert thing. And it's like... How much food is that? You know, it's just ridiculous. It's like a lot of food. It's a completely unnecessary amount of fuel. Um, anyway, the thing is that eating a lot of, uh, just, you know, just, just eating meat and fat and water and salt. Every time it's incredibly satisfying. It is so easy to stop eating. When I'm done eating, I want nothing to do with that food. Nothing. Um, which is just amazing to me. Uh, not to mention that I haven't had any sugar since not having the uh, powdered stuff. Like the powder, uh, powdered butter and powdered heavy cream. And that's just crazy to me. I didn't even think I was capable of that. And it's been months. And, you know, the cravings are still there. But they are very, very small. They are small. They're fleeting. They're forgettable. Because I'll think, you know, I, I kind of like, I don't know, a chocolate that I used to have. And that's kind of about it. I'm like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll try to reintroduce that next week or something. And then come next week, I have forgotten about it. Which is... It's just unthinkable because before I'd have to be like, I'm going to skip one day of sugar and then all the sugar that I want is going to be there the next day. It's like I would have to talk to myself this way to be able to go one day without it. <clears throat> um, I, I, uh, in terms of like exercise and uh, like moving and stuff, I'm not entirely sure just how much I've been experiencing because I can't say that I challenge myself really, really that much. Um, it has happened once or twice when I go running, which is what I really find difficult, that I wasn't getting super tired. And you know, that happens occasionally. Um, but I mean, otherwise I don't really get sore, just like in general, I don't know. Um, I have been waking up once a night for several months now, maybe like just under a year, not sure, it's a recent thing. And um, that is still happening, but with the wake sleep cycle being really consistent, I'm still getting better sleep. And more recently still, I don't know how that works. Um, meaning, I don't know, like the last two weeks, I have been sleeping longer. And when I wake up at night, I go back to sleep quite easily. Um, 
what else? Maybe some anxiety stuff. The anxiety is, I mean, it's still there. Um, but it's not as bad as it was before and it's not as constant either. I feel much more capable of doing things or just trying things. And that thing about focusing on one activity and finishing the activity because I'm not being interrupted by, I'm not inter interrupting myself by going to get something sweet because I feel like it. Um, it's been, that has been so marked that my husband commented on it like a week in or something. He was like, yeah, you're doing stuff now, which is crazy. Um, okay. <sighs> what else? Uh, the dermatitis is still there. I think I said that already, but... Um, I have read here and there about how it just it might take a while. There are some people that have gut issues and as the years go by of them continuing to do uh, eating animal to eat animal based, they start to notice slow betterment. Um, so I'm trying to be patient, but I'm still trying other stuff which I'll briefly go over in a little bit. Um, but you know maybe i just have to continue to eat this way for a little bit longer um judy cho from nutrition with with judy for example says to give and she's not the only one that has said it i heard another guy saying it but i don't remember what his name i don't know what his name is he says to they say to give eating this way a chance for like six year, uh, months to a year at least uh, and in Judy Cho's case, like her, her like a protocol for, for patients or whatever, is that if, if after that there's no benefits or your condition is like still there, to start looking at other environmental irritants like water, mold, whatever. Um, but I have read about a lot of people who just, you know, people who are trying it that experience benefits and remission of things much longer after having started and to a certain extent that makes sense because if you've had something that's kind of been just like punching you for decades then it makes sense that it'll take a little while to heal so some patients is probably due and i have heard something like that from uh carnivore doctor dr lisa wiedemann i think it's she's called her, that's her name you know you have to give it a chance to do you have to give your, your body a chance to heal from whatever it has to heal. Uh, meanwhile, trying to get the hang of eating in a completely different way than what we have been taught. Um, you know, so it, the whole thing takes a little while. It's a long-term project for sure. Uh, which I guess I can talk about some, some things that could be considered downsides. And maybe the adaptation process could be considered a downside. Um, because, you know, it takes a while maybe to find where to get cheap meat. And where you can get tallow from, where you can get marrow bones from. And once you get that stuff, it's like learning how to make this stuff, you know. So, like, that's it's a whole learning process. Because you, like, one can't, you know, because of how we've been told how we're supposed to eat like oh yeah get all of the fruits all the vegetables forget about the meat eggs maybe you know fish maybe uh whatever the arguments for those things are um and so like learning to focus on the one thing only takes a little while of just learning and polishing the process and finding what you like and seeing how you feel and trying another thing and then whatever you know so that whole entire process of learning it just it takes a while um some people supposedly experience a keto flu which is when they feel like tired and whatever because they don't have the carbohydrate source anymore um but i don't think that happened to me it doesn't necessarily happen to everyone um might have been because i was doing meat and fruit before i don't know but it didn't really happen to me um there's also people saying that they get diarrhea which in the subreddit the zero carb subreddit there's something about how the people who 
do experience it are just vociferous about it and the people who don't just don't ever talk about it so it gives the illusion that you're just gonna get the shits if you only eat meat uh, which is not the case necessarily it may or may not happen it's like you have to do it to see what happens and then if it does happen you just wait it out and it eventually kind of goes away um, I kind of have come and gone on this I like come and go on it I kind of had uh, sort of not at first because I was still eating cheese and like cheese kind of like hardens your poop uh, but then afterwards with only meat it was a little bit uh, runny for a while there and it kind of comes and goes in my case because also eating too much fat will loosen your stool and I tend to eat a lot of fat because it's fucking delicious so you know at least I know what the cause is and it doesn't really worry me but um, yeah there's that I mean I'm not worried about it uh, it's been pretty normal recently. I have had no trouble pooping at all. At any moment. Um, what else? Um, socializing, I guess, is something that also takes kind of relearning in a way. Because like now, obviously, you can't just go... Obviously, I can't just go to any restaurant and eat whatever I want. Um because I don't want to eat certain things. I only want to eat beef. Um, keyword want. <laughs> so then kind of like learning to think of alternatives to socialization that don't involve eating is a whole exercise. It's challenging. Uh, it's nice and everything, but it's challenging. Because, and you know, I myself used to think this way that it's like, yeah, and I mean, I still do. It's not, it's not like socialization or the com communing with other people has to be removed from eating or the making of food, but then it's like, like limited to kind of just, you know, beef. Um, and not, not everyone is into that and that's fine. But, you know, it's like a thing that must be considered and thought of when you're hanging out you're gonna hang out with people so yes um, I don't know I don't think of those as like deterrents to I mean that was those were not problems for me when I was considering what whether to do to eat animal based or not it was sugar for me it's like I, those things are not problems to me. I'm perfectly willing, you know, the downsides in quotes. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about other things that I'm doing for my generalized health, and to try to and it, just to experiment to see if something if it uh, starts making the dermatitis calm the fuck down. Um, maybe I should look at the notes that I wrote for that. All right, just give me a minute. a moment okay <sighs> okay so things that I'm trying just for my overall health but largely to see what happens with the dermatitis not using soap or shampoo should I just list these I don't know uh, exercise that's just a constant it's not temporary uh, working on ways to address mental health and attitude and mindset stuff. Um, like breathing and relaxation, face massage, that kind of stuff. Uh, I was doing journaling for a little while and just write, I mean, I, I kind of still do, just like write stuff down about how I feel physically and, you know, in the minds and stuff. Um, not using toothpaste. Reducing the amount of time I spend on social media. That's awesome. Uh, using different things as moisturizers like shea butter or tallow. Uh, using shea butter, tallow, carrier oils on my hair. 
face masks. I've tried bentonite clay, which I've also used to brush my teeth. Apple cider vinegar, egg white, Epsom salts. I'm currently experimenting with electrolytes and iodine drops in my drinks and stuff. Which is water or fizzy water. Um, oh right, using egg yolks to wash my hair. That's fucking awesome. It really fucking is. It's kind of crazy. It seems like absurd to use shampoo if you have egg yolks available to you. It's way cheaper and it's just awesome. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. Oh, and recently, like yesterday, I got a water filter to see if that does anything. Uh, and the average life of the water filter is three months. It's like when you're supposed to replace it, so we'll see what happens in that time. So we'll see <coughs> until around October. All right, so just start closing it out. I don't know, this is my experience. I like this route of trying things for myself via my own experience and experimenting for, my, for myself. I'm pretty sure, I haven't looked it up, but I'm, I'm sure that experience and experiment must be related words because they are so similar. It's like they have the same prefix there. Uh, exper, you know, experiencing thing yourself. It's like hearing the testimony of something directly from the person rather than through some stupid ass news source that words things in a manipulative way. Um, yes. So. Even if the, you know, for me, even if the dermatitis is not put into remission by eating only beef, it is still worth it for me to do so, to continue eating this way because of the other benefits that are crazy that I have been, that I continue to experience. So that means it's still like a positive, I mean, for me, it's still a positive thing for sure. Uh, it's like what, I can sit down and do stuff and focus on something and finish it? That's crazy. It was very difficult before because I would, I would just have looping negative thoughts about just worrying about shit. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. Um, so like now that time that was before occupied with looping thoughts about negative things and worrying about things and being anxious about stuff, like now I can think about other things. It's like that time can now be occupied with other things like thinking about art and beauty, you know, things that are actually important. Um, so I don't know, I think it's a, it's exciting and you know, when I was younger, you know, there's this whole thing for women about empowering women and control of your body and whatever it is, this kind of stuff. And I thought posting a naked picture of myself on the internet was asserting control over my body and my life. And it's really not. Um, that's arguably the opposite. Now that I've been doing this, it's like, wow, this is having control of my body. And it's like not control exactly of like, oh, controlling all of the, whatever the hell my, you know, the autonomous stuff, like involuntary stuff is, it's not that. But just, I'm the one that's putting in the effort to look for what could be happening and trying different things and finding results in different things instead of going to some doctor, giving a, some kind of information and hoping that they will tell me what's happening within me. Um, that is to relent control of your autonomy to a third party. And I quite enjoy that I'm not doing that with this. And there, you know, um, of course we should definitely be grateful for the advancements in medicine and stuff, but I definitely think that we tend to be over-reliant on that stuff. Meaning that, oh my god, my nail hurts. I'm gonna go to the doctor. You know, it's like the smallest thing and you go to the doctor. And I just feel like most times it's not necessary to go to the, you know, I don't know. Um, a bit more dis discernment when it comes to looking for another opinion versus just 
waiting to see what happens, gathering information within yourself, taking note of, like, it's like putting in the effort of paying attention yourself to yourself to see what happens. Change something, look for something, think about something. What can I be, what is it that I'm doing to, that is causing this? What is happening around me that might be causing this? Something like that. It's like, that is a really good relationship with oneself. And it's difficult and it takes a while and it's not easy, but it is way more meaningful and way more long-term for sure than other stuff. And I think I'm gonna uh, leave it at that for now. Let me know what you think. Uh, ha have you tried animal-based? Are you thinking about it? Why have you tried it? Did you stop? Why did you stop? Why are you trying to resolve? Uh, you know, I'm gonna keep working on the blog entry because it, again, it's long as hell. It's a freaking essay. And then I'll post it on Instagram and then when it's done, I'll put it also in the show notes, uh, you know, like in the video caption description. So thank you very much for listening and have a fantastic day.